Ah! Greetings, brother and cloaking donkey here, and today I'm going to talk you through the 1 to 20 leveling experience for the realm of Albion in Classic Dark Age of Camelot. For leveling in Classic Dark Age of Camelot, there are basically two major ways, at least at the lower levels. You can either solo by doing mostly kill tasks, or you can level in a group by just having your group sit at a spot with lots of monsters that hopefully come as a group, and then kill those over and over for lots and lots of experience. The leveling process in Dark Age of Camelot is certainly a lot more focused around the social experience aspect than it is around any sort of story building or anything like that, which you would expect in more modern, questing-based MMORPGs. So let's first get into kill tasking. As I said, there really isn't that much questing in Classic Dark Age of Camelot. There are quests, but they generally are longer chains that give you really good rewards at the end, and they are really just there to hand out some items throughout the levels. There's maybe a few on each level, if that. Kill tasking are kind of a proto-quest. You basically go up to a guard and say task, and then that guard will tell you to go in a certain direction and kill a specific monster. The guard will always send you to kill a monster that exists in a blue con for you. So if he gives you a mob name and you can only find that mob as a red or a purple or an orange, there certainly is that same monster somewhere in a blue variation. Also note that the kill task is generated at the time that you accept it at the guard, and he will pick randomly a monster on the map that is blue to you and currently spawned. This does however not take into account other people going around the map killing things. So if someone kills that specific monster you were supposed to kill and there's only one of it, you have to wait for a respawn. The only way to abandon a kill task is by dying, losing a duel, or by waiting a bunch of hours until it runs out by itself. To accept a task, find yourself a named guard. These named guards are generally around starting positions in various towns as well as around guard towers. Click the guard and type slash whisper task or make yourself a macro by typing slash macro space task space slash whisper space task which will then put a button on your mouse cursor that you can put in your hotbar and from then on have easy access to the task phrase. Now in the background you can see most of the relevant map that you will going to need to get from level 1 to level 20. Between Camelot Hills and Black Mountain South lies the main city of Camelot. Camelot is really important for your journey because a lot of the things you are going to need throughout your career, such as trainers to accept your epic quest line, your storage, Trainers that will teach you how to craft, crafting stations, crafting merchants, and lots and lots of other things are only available in Camelot, or in very, very remote locations scattered all throughout the map. If you've chosen to start your adventures in Albion as a Highlander fighter, you will start in the town of Humberton in Black Mountain South. Or if you chose to start your journey as a Highlander acolyte, you will start in Humberton Castle right next to Humberton. If you've watched the leveling guides for the other factions, you will be sorely disappointed to hear that Albion has probably the worst starting towns in the entire game. There are very few quests of relevance, and for the most part, you're just going to have to kill task. Also, pretty much all the locations you can start at are as bad as each other, so there really is no point in moving from one to the other, and you're best off just staying where you are. There is one exception, however, and that is for Humberton. Because the first thing you want to do as a fighter is grab the quest from your trainer right in front of you. It will take you up to the castle, at which point you will also get another quest to go and kill a black wolf pup. This you probably will only be able to do at level 2, as the black wolf pups are yellow for level 1. Also grab a kill task in the center of Humberton, and then head out and kill blue monsters until you have 8 bubbles on level 1 and then kill your task target, at which point you should have 9 bubbles. Now head back to the named guard, turn in your task which will ding you level 2 and then immediately pick up a task for level 2. Now you want to go and kill your black wolf pup for your quest. Once you turn this quest in in Humberton Castle, you'll be given a little figurine and told to go to Ludlow and hand this to a merchant. You don't have to do this right away, you can continue to kill blue monsters and task your way up to level 3 before heading over to Ludlow. 
From then on, I would personally stay in Ludlow because there's also another quest to complete there, but you can also return to Humberton if you like the area better once you've turned in your quest and gotten your cloak. You really do want to get this cloak because it is probably the best cloak that you will get for 20 to 30 levels, depending on whenever else you find another one. If you decided to start your journey in Albion as a Highlander Rogue or a Saracen Mage, then your journey will begin in Ludlow Village, also in Black Mountain South, just east of Humberton across the hill. Grab a task from God Rin. He's a bit of a bastard and constantly wanders around the village, which can get rather annoying when you task here for five levels. And sadly, I couldn't really figure out a pattern to his movements. He seems to move quite erratically through the area, which makes it all the more annoying. <laughs> but you really will just have to deal with that. Then go out and kill blue monsters until you are 8 bubbles into level 1. Go and kill your task target to get to 9 bubbles and then head back to Rin to ding level 2 and pick up the first task for level 2. If you came from Humbert and you want to hand in your carved wolf's head statue thingy to the seamstress in the westernmost building in town. At level 3 you want to go into the large house in Ludlow and pick up the quest Argus's arrows from the Argus Bowman. This quest is fantastic because you just have to kill a few young cut purses to complete it and you receive a nice little jewel that gives you a bunch of dexterity. So anyone who starts here can really use this jewel for plenty and plenty of levels. So I would really recommend that you do this quest. And while the cut purses are still yellow on level 3, you can just wait till you're level 4 and then kill them while they are blue. Continue to kill blue monsters and complete kill tasks until you hit level 5, at which point you should go south to Camelot to choose your advanced class and immediately train. If you began your journey in Albion as a Briton rogue or a Briton disciple, then you will start in Cotswold Village to the east of Camelot. Cotswold Village is an absolutely terrible spot to level up. The only thing here that you need is Stonemason Glover, and we'll get to him in a little bit. But the first thing you want to do is immediately march south toward Pridwin Keep and then task from there. Because the tasking in Cotswold is terrible. The task guard for Cotswold is at the upper Camelot gates, which means even at level 1 it is an enormous way to get from the task guard to the monsters. Do not kill task in Cotswold, this is an absurd waste of time. If you began your journey in Albion as a Briton fighter, a Briton acolyte, or anything that starts in Cotswold, you will be in Pridwin Keep. And the first thing you want to do is go to the entrance of Pridwin Keep and take a kill task from the named guard there by clicking him and typing slash whisper task or hitting your kill task macro, and then heading out and killing blue monsters until you have 8 bubbles of experience. As soon as you do, kill your task target to get to 9 bubbles and then head back to the named guard to ding level 2 and immediately pick up the task for level 2. Sadly, there really are no interesting quests for you to do in Camelot Hills. The only thing that you might want to do is when you kill Spriggans or Brownies or Water Sprites or Fairies, anything like that, then you have the chance to get stone shirts, which are these little red gems in your inventory. And they will be round stone shirts, flat or pointy ones, and you can take these to Stonemason Glover in Cotswold, hand them in and he will give you a 100% quality weapon of the corresponding type. So if it's a flat stone shirt, you will get a sword, a round one will get you a club, etc. If you can find one of these, you really want to go and pick up the weapon, because it is absolutely fantastic for these lower levels. If you only find stone shirts that you personally can't do anything with, try to see if there's other low-level players around who you might be able to trade them with. Apart from that, just keep killing blue monsters and do more kill tasks until you hit level 5, at which point you should go to Camelot to pick your advanced class and for some basic training. If you decide to begin your journey in Albion as an Avalonian Major Elementalist, you will start in the Lathantis Association in Campa Corentin Forest. Or if you decided to be a Saracen Fighter or a Saracen Rogue, then you will start your journey in the Campa Corentin Station, which is just next to the Lathantis Association. And as such, I'm going to handle both of these together. For those characters that do start in the Lathantis Association, immediately take the quest from your trainer and talk to the guy that is right next to you. He will then send you to talk to a guard, which is west at the river next to Campa Corentin Station. Turn that in because it will be a good chunk of experience and you can skip most of level 1 with it. Then grab a kill task from the named guard at the tower at Campa Corentin Station by clicking them and typing slash whisper task or hitting your kill task macro. 
Then head out and kill blue monsters until you are 8 bubbles into level 1. Specifically, you want to try to kill pixie imps because they will drop a bunch of gear that you can use at low level. Once you have 8 bubbles, find and take out your kill task target and then go and hand in your kill task, which will ding you level 2 and then you can immediately grab the first kill task for level 2. Just like with all the other areas, there sadly are no interesting quests that you can do here. So just continue tasking and killing blue monsters until you hit level 5. At which point you should be able to find a trainer somewhere here in the Lathantis Association or Campo Corentin Station. But there are one or two advanced classes that you will not find here and you will have to go to Camelot. However, I would certainly advise you to go to Camelot anyway, because pretty much all of your level 5 leveling should happen in Camelot Hills as it is the best area to do this. So find yourself the Stable Master and buy a ticket to Camelot Gates. Then click on the ticket in your inventory and drop it onto the Stable Master to be mounted onto an automated horse that will bring you there. Once you are on the horse, stay away from the spacebar. If you hit spacebar or whatever your jump key is, you will immediately jump off the horse, the horse will ride on and leave you there and you will have wasted all of those 5 silvers that you paid for the ticket. That doesn't really matter at the higher levels, but at the lower levels 5 silvers Silver is a fortune. If you decided to begin your journey in Albion as a Briton mage, an Avalonian fighter or acolyte, or any Inconoclast, then you are most unfortunate indeed because you will start in Adribard's Retreat in Avalon Marsh. This is the worst starting location simply because it is so damn far away from anything interesting. You can get easily from level 1 to 5 in Adrabar's Retreat, but that's really it. Apart from that, Avalon Marsh is pretty much a level 15 to 20 leveling area and there is nothing there for you. You will not even find all the advanced class trainers down here, so at level 5 immediately bugger out. Also, there are no interesting quests, so the first thing you want to do is you go to the named guard at the bridge, click them, and type slash whisper mask or hit your kill task macro, and then you go out and kill blue monsters until you have 8 bubbles into level 1. Then locate your kill task target, which brings you to 9 bubbles, and then head back to the named guard to ding level 2 and also immediately pick up the next task for level 2. Continue killing stuff and turning in kill tasks until you are level 5, at which point you either want to locate your trainer at Adrobard's retreat or if you're unlucky and your trainer isn't here, go to the stable master, buy a ticket that brings you anywhere close to Camelot Hills, so Cotswold, Pridrin Keep, Camelot Gates, click on the ticket in your inventory and drop it onto the stable master at which point you will be placed onto an automated horse that will bring you to your destination. Then go to Camelot and choose your advanced class and do some good training. And then it is time for you to decide whether or not you want to level solo from 5 to 20 or if you want to level in a group. Personally, I would always advise that people level together in groups because Firstly, it's kind of what classic Dark Age of Camelot is all about. That social experience of leveling your characters up together will give you a certain amount of realm cohesion and will prepare you for the higher levels where pretty much everything else is also based around group play. Now if you should decide to level by yourself from 5 to 20, then you can do kill tasks just like you did from level 1 to 5. Kill tasking is a thing that is only available from level 1 to 20 and you can actually gain a little bit of money from doing this as well because the money you gain for the task goes up quite significantly over the levels that you're allowed to do these tasks. At level 5 you want to start tasking at the Pridwin Bridge south side. The named guard there will give you excellent tasks that, well, some of them will send you all over Camelot Hills, but on some other levels the tasks will be pretty damn close. It really depends on the level that you're doing this at. But trust me, there really are no better locations for tasking from 5 to 11. At level 11 you want to go to West Downs in Salisbury Plains and you can easily stay here until level 14. You will really only ever be sent into the upper half of Salisbury Plains if you stay here only till level 14. If you go anywhere past that 15-16 you will be sent all over Salisbury Plains and sometimes even into Camp Accorrented Forest. It's really annoying and so really only stay here till 14. But the great thing is, at level 14, you can go down to Care Witrin in Avalon Marsh and you can stay here all the way to level 20. Care Witrin is one of the best kill tasking locations in the entire game across all factions. Because throughout the entire six levels that you spend here, there will be monsters that are incredibly close to where you are getting your tasks. 
Yes, yeah, sometimes you have to go a bit further across the zone, but really 80% of the time you really are just going 300 meters maybe to get your task and then return back home. And you can solo pretty damn quickly here. Throughout the process of leveling up solo, you will constantly have the problem that your gear will go gray. Gear goes gray pretty quickly at the lower levels. And grey gear is just a pain in the butt to level with, so sometimes you will want to go to dungeons to get yourself some new equipment. And there are some choices for you to make. The first one you can go to is Mithra's Tomb, and I would definitely not advise you to go there before level 10. There are some things you could kill before level 10 as a solo player, but there's really no point, because the only things that really drop items start at level 10. But you can stay all the way to level 16 in Mithra's Tomb if you so choose. The other dungeon is Keltoi Fogu in Camp Corentin Forest, and while you can go here before level 19, once again I really wouldn't recommend it, because you really want to kill the stuff that actually gives gear, and that really only starts at level 19. All in all, solo leveling in Albion is kind of alright, really. Especially once you get to 14 and you can go down to Care Witrin, you are going to have a very easy time getting to level 20. However, as I did say, the best way of leveling in Dark Age of Camelot is certainly to level as a group and to find yourself a really good spot with orange to purple monsters, depending on the abilities of your group, and then just pulling those monsters and getting lots of juicy experience. And the better the experience, the more fun you're going to have with your party. We're going to start out in Camelot Hills. And at level 5, you want to kill the river races in the southeastern corner of the map. These snakes are pretty excellent because they don't come as a group. While later on in levels you certainly want to prioritize monsters that do come in a group and then work with crowd control. At these lower levels it is much much easier to kill things that are just a little bit higher level and then team up on them but make them come by themselves. And these river races are perfect to get you from level 5 to 7. At level 6 you can go north of Mithra's tomb where you will find a bunch of ants. Now these ants do bring friends when they come so you absolutely want to bring some crowd control. But they do give some quite excellent experience. From 7 to 9 you can kill the boulderlings just southwest of Pridwin Bridge. There's also another camp of boulderlings south of Mithra's tomb, but it's a little bit smaller and I would really recommend that you go with this boulderling camp at Pridwin Bridge. Do be careful though, you don't want to overdo it here. I see a lot of groups who put themselves right on top of the hill in between all the boulderlings and that can easily lead to wipes, so it's better to be careful and to pull them down the hill. Then next you want to go to Salisbury Plains. And from 9 to 11 you want to kill Tomb Raider Scouts at the Barrow Den in the northeast corner of Salisbury Plains. Now this is going to sound unconventional, but I actually advocate for you leaving Salisbury Plains immediately afterwards. There are quite a few other decent leveling spots in Salisbury Plains, but usually, especially when the server is fresh, these spots will all be taken constantly. And you will be fighting with other groups and with necromancers over the dregs and it really doesn't end up being that much fun. So it's better to go to another zone, namely Campa Corentin Forest and have pretty much the entire zone to yourself because very few people actually take their groups here. It is seen as a little bit off the beaten path, but once you get here you will realize how damn good Campo Corentin Forest is for leveling. And the first spot you want to go to at level 10 are the Ebony Fellwoods. These are tree spirit type monsters, so they are incredibly vulnerable to slashing and heat damage. And their camp is absolutely enormous. They also come in groups, so you definitely want to bring some crowd control and at least one or two tanks. But the experience you can gain here is fantastic. The only downside to this is that they don't really drop any gear. At level 12 you can either stay at the Ebony Fellwoods for a little bit of a slower level up, or you can move to the Wood Ogres southwest of Care Ulfwich. The Wood Ogres are a bit of a mixed bag, because they have some ranged mobs in there as well, so you really do need to be handy with your crowd control and with your interrupts to make sure that they don't disease or poison the entire group. But with a good group the Wood Ogres are certainly a fantastic spot to level up at. At level 14 you can go to the Ashen Fellwoods, which are just west of the Ebony Fellwoods, on the other side of the hill that is separating the two spots. With the Ashen Fellwoods you have to be a little bit more careful, because there are also some Oaken Fellwoods in between that are just a little bit higher level. They're not unkillable for your group at level 14 to 15, but you definitely need to be a little bit more careful at this spot. 
Once you're level 16, you want to move on and we'll go to Cornwall, which is west of Avalon Marshes. And the one thing you want to kill here repeatedly for the next four levels are the skeletal Romans at the little Roman outpost in the southeast corner of the zone. This spot is fantastic because it has everything from skeletal Roman centurions to Roman legionnaires and Roman centurion ghosty types. And they go all the way from level 17 and 18 to level 21. So it's a really good spot here to level for a group for entirely four levels. Do be careful though, there are a few named mobs, especially there's one patrol that can get really quite annoying. But with a good group, this spot is absolutely no problem. And they're all melee mobs, which is of course fantastic for your group. If you would rather level than dungeons, then you should go to Mithra's tomb. You can go there as early as level eight, but personally, I would really advise you only go there from level 10, because it can really be quite annoying at level 8. And also, Mithra's tomb is usually quite full of necromancers. So certainly be apprised of that. You can easily stay here until level 12, or sometimes even longer. There are a few higher level spots, but generally those are specifically camped by necromancers all the time. So it's usually not gonna be all that clear if you can really get there. The other dungeon is Keltoi Fogu down in Kampukarentin Forest, and you can go here as early as level 17. Sadly, there's a little bit of a gap here because the Ashen Fellwoods definitely will only get you to about level 16. Getting to 17 on those Ashen Fellwoods is gonna take a while and it's gonna be quite annoying. With a really, really good group, you might be able to go to Keltoi Fogu at level 16, but I would certainly advise that your group be level 17 on average. But once you get there, you can stay easily to level 22, and there are so many drops in there, you will equip your entire party, be it cloth, leather, reinforced, chain or plate, any type of weapon, doesn't matter, you will find it all in this amazing dungeon. I would really advise you to not skip out on Keltoi Fogu, because it will equip you for the next 10 levels easily. Alright, and that is pretty much everything you need to know about leveling up in classic Dark Age of Camelot within the realm of Albion. At least to level 20, of course. If you enjoyed this guide, please consider giving it a like and also consider subscribing to my channel for more history, mythology and gaming goodness. If you're looking for any of the other guides in this series, check out the cards in the top right corner of the screen. Also check the description box below for all of the links to the other videos, as well as a link to the playlist that has all of these guides nicely lined up in one convenient location for you. But until then, I've been the Cloaking Donkey and I'll see you in another video!